Well, perhaps wishful thinking on my part there. Still five minutes left to go, not quite the stroke of half time. Wigan now just to try and a goal behind Witness. So it's Wigan driving the ball in, attempting to make some ground and get into the Witness half of the field. Run around there with uh, Andy Goodway coming into the line. This time Witness making sure that they all move back into an onside position. Skellett drives it in. Dermot throws it back to Lydon. Lydon thinks about kicking and then does so. Alan Tate takes it well. He's got to be given 10 yards and Tate just stands still. Myler tells Kate just to kick it back down and Tate does so. That's a good kick from Alan Tate, but it goes straight to Steve Hampson and Myler was there. Good play that from the captain, Tony Myler. He stood 10 yards away from Hampson before Tate had even kicked it. Intelligent thinking that from Myler. So Wigan still in their own half. Dennis Betts just making the halfway line. Ball going out to Gregory. Gregory Dummy Sorensen. Dermot again this time moving it to the right. Andy Platt, good running from Platt. I think he's one of Wigan's most reliable forwards. He's established a name for himself at Wigan since signing from St. Helens. Gregory puts up a well, an unconventional kick. He seems to slice it. Tate takes it very well indeed. Sean Edwards is up there, but Tate sidesteps him. Sidesteps him fairly easily. Well tackled by Gildart. Devlo is behind the play of the ball. Witness forwards now regrouping. And this time it's Alan Tate behind the play of the ball. Switches it to Kurt Sorensen. Sorensen takes it to the right, knocks off. Knocks off uh, Den Dean Bell. Kurt Sorensen has had a big first half, as he did indeed last week against Whitehaven. He gave everything he had in the first half, and then he was content to sit on the bench at the second half. Whether he'll do that in this match remains to be seen. That's a good kick from Les Holiday. Again, putting Wigan back in their own half, and when you're leading by 14 points to eight, that's where you want to keep the opposition. I'm just saying Kurt Sonson's had a big half. Calvin Skerritt's faded away a little bit in the second portion of this half. Well, Kurt is supposed to be 34. Well, Calvin Skerritt looks 34 to me. And Kurt's on about retiring at the end of the season, Gary. Uh, I wouldn't retire if I was him. Plenty plenty to offer. Yes, he had a big game last week against uh, Whitehaven, as I say. And indeed, when he came on in the Charity Shield against Wigan at Swansea, again, he had a, a big second half in that game. But at the moment, it's Wigan in possession. They'll be looking to salvage something from this half and could go in with a draw. Just trailing by six points at the moment. The ball moves to the blind. Platt taking it off Dermot, but really there was four witness defenders against the three Wigan players there. This time it goes out to the left. Gregory, well, Gregory did a runner down with himself there and picked the ball up on the bounce. A little bit fortunate because Sean Edwards came too early and Gregory's pass went behind Edwards. But Dean Bell takes it in for Wigan. And now Wigan are looking to move the ball out to the right. Gregory, well, Gregory goes for the drop goal, but it's nothing like close enough. Alan Tate takes it well, and he gives the ball to a fire. And now a fire tries to stand up, Preston. He goes back. And now he's going for the gap on the opposite side of the field, and Martin the fire. Well, that was very unfortunate there, because the fire created an overlap on the right-hand side of the field. Some, players, some people should say he should have just took it in and died with it. But he did create the overlap on the right-hand side of the field, and he just tried to get the pass out and was hit as he did so. And if, I think if Martin Fire didn't try things like that, then he wouldn't be quite such a spectacular player. And Andy Gregory penalised for feeding at the scrum. Well, really, there's no need to feed the ball these days at the scrum. That's back to one for witness. Well, I don't know about that. Joe Lydon, uh, not wishing to be sound too biased, but Joe Lydon looked to me the... A little bit like Diego Maladonna, the way he dived. Touch judge comes on on the far side. Mr Haig. And 
well, Wigan come away with a penalty. A little bit unfortunate for Widnes. Although I must admit, from where I'm stood, I could have missed something there, but uh, Leiden seemed to do a bit of a swan dive. But now it's Wigan on the attack. Well, surely that was the same thing that Chris Ashurst was pushed away from the play of the ball. Touch judge didn't spot it this time. And this time it's Imosi Koloto, I think, that's being penalised for the swinging arm in the tackle. And it's a penalty for Wigan. And I think as we do now approach the half-time hooter, I think that Wigan are going to go for goal, put themselves within four points of witness. Mr. Allett just having a word with Imosi Coloto. Two unfortunate penalties for witness to concede there. It's taken them from the halfway line right down to 20 metres inside the lone half. So Leiden steps up. Should score this one. And indeed he, he, he does. No problem whatsoever for Joe Leiden. Wigging back into the game at 14 points to 10. Well, I don't know if Witness relaxed after John Devereaux's try, but Wigan have certainly come back into the game, John. Bang right back in it now, Gary. Two silly penalties by Witness then from the halfway, right back under the sticks. Penalty given away. No need at all. Doug will be having a talk from half time about that. Can't make mistakes like that. And you can never afford to relax against Wigan, the best, well, the top team in the country, certainly last season in terms of silverware. And that's a great run there, and he's taking the fire out of the tackle. And now it's Preston, and Preston's got the legs. But Martin Afire did well to get back, and David Hume, good shepherd in there from David Hume. Well, that was a superb play by Andy Goodway in the first instance to set up that move for Mark Preston, and Goodway certainly putting himself into contention for that coveted GB spot against the Aussies next month. And again, it's Goodway taking the ball in, but McKenzie pulls the ball out. Good play by McKenzie, another player looking to gain his first cap for Great Britain when he becomes nationalised in September. And now Witness can move the ball out to the right. Coloto comes into it. Nearly slipped the ball out, but decided to keep hold. Cuddy was just a little bit too close. Kurt Sellenson comes on a flat one, gets it out. Coloto gives it back to Devlo, and now Devlo's going to go on his own. Thought about doing a risky pass. And there's the half-time hooter at Norton Park in the second round of the Green Hall Lancashire Cup. Witness, after taking a commanding lead, well, they went down, they took a lead 2 0 from Jonathan Davis, then they went down to a good way try, which was goaled by Leiden. But Witness came back with tries from Martin Afire and John Devlo, and two superb touchline conversions from Jonathan Davis. But then two Leiden penalties with five minutes to go, and then just on the stroke of half time, have put Wigan back into the game. It's Witness 14, Wigan 10. So as Witness start the second half, leading by 14 points to 10. No substitutions as far as I can see at the moment. Both sides electing to keep the same players. That's a good tackle from Tony Myler. And I think we can have a very exciting half in prospect with such a prize at stake. The last time that Witness won the Lancashire Cup was in 1979. Wigan, of course, have won it a few times over the last couple of seasons. But Witness desperately looking to get this piece of silverware back. And at the moment, they're in a position to do so. And I'm sure Wigan will be wanting to do something about that. That's a crunching tackle there from Kurt Sellenson and McKenzie. Ball thrown back to Leiden. Good kick from Joe Leiden. He splits John Devereaux. And the ball's not going to go out. It's taken to Devereaux. Devereaux is forced to play it. He runs straight at Sean Edwards. 
Dean Bell and Andy Goodway, and now it's Tate behind the play of the ball. That was a good kick from Lydon because the Wigan forwards are still making their way back. It's very difficult, especially in this heat, for the forwards to get back to a kick like that. This time it's Litzius taking it in. The crowd on the far side of the field spotted something there. The referee spotted it as well. Kelvin Skerritt it is, who's been shouted over. I missed that one, John. Did you spot it? A little punch, Gary. Kelvin Skerritt just threw one in on the blind side. Referee picked it up. Little punches off forwards aren't always easy to spot. That's why we ask a, a next forward. The referee, I think, Mr. Lowe, did very well to spot that. It's a good ball out from Chris Asher. It's a brilliant ball. And that's an equally good ball from Kurt Thomas. And he's put Andy Currier away. Currier's still going. He's turning on. He thought about throwing the long pass out. And this time he gives it to Tate. And Tate's going through. He gives the ball to a fire. Well taken by Martin fire, but he ran out of pitch, but a brilliant move from Witness. Starting when Kurt Sorensen ran onto that ball, and then he gave a superb ball himself to Alan Tate. Tate got it out to Currier. Currier almost beat the defence, bounced off two tackles, got the ball out to Alan Tate, out to Martin fire, but the fire just ran out of space. But a promising start for Witness. Well, Mr. Allett says the ball came straight out. Wigan came up in possession, and they come up in possession again, so that was a waste of a few minutes there. Steve Hampson coming into the line, tackled by Holiday. And Preston comes off the wing, and he's trying to make an overlap. But well tackled there, superb tackle from Andy Currier. Jed Byrne now behind the play of the ball, but Currier wraps him up again. And this time it's Platt. Bounces off Myler, but Myler hangs on to him. Edwards. Andy Goodway beat Coloto then, but then throws the ball back inside. Well, that was a curlless pass, but fortunate for Wigan, it goes to Sean Edwards and then to Kelvin Skerritt. And Kelvin Skerritt still standing up. David Hume just hanging on to Skerritt's boots. And a dummy from the play of the ball, and Dermot's gone through, but well covered by Alan Tate. Witness fullback did well to get to that one, and he gives the ball to a fire, but really not anywhere for Martin the fire to go there. But Martin Dermott going from the acting half back was allowed some space. It's not the best of play the balls from a fire, but it went backwards. And now Coloto, brilliant side step from Mimosa Coloto, drives the ball in, gets it to Myra, and now Myra's gone for the gap. Has Tony Myra got the speed? He just couldn't get the ball out to Alan Tate on his right hand side. And that should be now a penalty. And uh, indeed, somebody's injured in the tackle on, my, on Tony Myler. Unfortunately, it wasn't as serious as it looked at first. We're going to have got Bobby Golding warming up on the touchline. Getting some cheerful boos off the witness supporters. Golding, of course, being a witness lad himself. But it's witness in possession. Well, I think the referee's given crossing there. Very unfortunate for witness. Richard Erz looked to have gone through a gap, but uh, ref referee Mr. Allett spotted an infringement. So Wigan come out with the ball, Sean Edwards runs at the man. Jed Burns come inside, good run from Jed Byrne. I know it's Edwards against Devereaux, but good tackle from John Devereaux. Good play by Jed Byrne there, coming inside Joel Lydon. Creating a bit of space for himself. But John Devereaux had it covered, and indeed he's got that one covered as well with Ian Gildart. Andy Platt, but Platt was on his own there. Andy Platt's driving the ball in, John, but there's nobody with him then. Now Andy Platt's having a very good game, he's all in the Wigan pack together at the moment. Uh, 
if Kelvin Skerritt wants to be a Wigan player or a good Wigan player, he'll have to start matching Andy Platt's work rate. That was a good kick there in the meantime. I think that was uh, Andy Gregory who put that one in for Preston to chase against the fire. I think the fire was just content to let it go dead because uh, Preston was matching in pace, pace for pace there. So it's witness to feed the ball. We're going to have got Bobby Golding, as I said, warming up on the uh, touchline, but I'm just wondering who's going to come off unless somebody's had a knock, because I think Andy Gregory really has been making this a different Wigan team to the one we saw at Swansea. Obviously, other players involved as well, but Gregory's running the show, and Sean Edwards is having a good game as well, so uh, not quite sure unless one of those two's got a knock. Well, the ball... It's a penalty to Wigan. The ball failed to go into the scrum twice. So Hampson, well, why they called Steve Hampson up to take that one, I don't know, because he just boosted it straight into touch. But now the ball moves out to the left. Calvin Skerritt charges in, but well tackled by the witness cover. But now Wigan lining up out on the left-hand side of the field. The ball comes out to Platt. He does another run around with Gregory. That seems to be working well for these. And Dean Bell had acres of space there. Well, what happened to the witness defence then, we must ask. Andy Currier just couldn't catch Dean Bell's legs. Well, the Wigan there had acres of space. There was a gap a mile wide, similar to the one that Andy Goodway scored through before. It was a good run around between Andy Gregory and Andy Platt as the ball came away from that penalty. And it went to Dean Bell and he just sauntered in. So Wigan back on equal terms now, 14 each with just this kick from Leiden. John, what happened then? Well, Andy Gregory's making this Wigan team uh, buzz at the moment. He's running the show, lovely move, a well-worked move by Wigan. I've seen it a few times, Dean Bell under the sticks. So Leiden now to put Wigan ahead. And he does, it sails over. So Wigan come back from 14 points to six down. It's now Wigan ahead by 16 points to 14 and Witness now must start to pull something out of the bag here. So from a promising start for Witness in the first half, now they find themselves certainly under the hammer and with a lot to do. They've had one or two spells of bad luck, but really Wigan haven't threatened the Witness line on many occasions, and, and on both occasions when they have put something on, it's worked and they've crossed the line and scored. Just wondering whether we can see a Witness substitution coming on. Bobby Golden sat down again on the Wigan bench for the moment. Put his stack suit top back on, so no immediate plans for him to come on. I'm just wondering if uh, maybe one or two of the witness players might be feeling a bit tired. The play goes on. Gregory again. Gregory's running it for Wigan, and Sean Edwards is chasing after that one. And the ball crosses the dead ball line. But again, it's that little man, Andy Gregory. Well, you can say what you want about Wigan having six different players in from the side that witness beating Swansea, but for my money, it's Andy Gregory that's making all the difference. So witness still in their own half, penned back on the 22-metre line. Chris Ashurst tries to run it out. Coloto, well, I've not really seen Coloto do a a blockbusting run for some time now. And Joe Grimmer stands up from the witness bench, so coach Doug Lawton is indeed thinking of making a substitution. And it seems either Kurt Sorensen or young Chris Ashurst that will be coming off for Grimmer. Kick from Davis, and he just put that one in front of Jed Byrne. Too risky for Byrne to attempt. And the witness substitution is being made. It's Chris Ashurst who's coming off. He had a big first half and he has played his heart out, the young lad. It's a good prospect for the future. Ashurst doesn't want to come off. 
He's keen to stay on, and that speaks volumes for the lad. Well, on comes Joe Grimmer, and we've seen Grimmer change the game a few times over the seasons while he's been at Widnes, and that's what we'll be looking for him to do now, because Widnes needed a little bit of a spark to come back into the game. Gregory feeds the ball, but it comes out to Holiday, and now Myler's got Alan Tate in the line, and Tate just tackled there, a good tackle from Joe Lydon down the ankles, because Tate was looking to go through the gap. Witness moving it still to the left. Holiday dummies. Looks inside to a fire, but again, best to be safe. Witness don't want to lose possession. They've got four tackles left in this spell of six. Myler moves it out to Currier. Currier sidesteps and he nearly gets through the gap. He looks for somebody on his shoulder. A fire claims he was impeded. But I think really he should get back on with the game because Witness still in possession. Tony Myler slips it to a fire. A fire tries to get it to Hume, but Hume was tackled without the ball then. The ball was going to Hume, and Coloto has gone through a gap. Emoti Coloto has got Davis outside, but Davis bundled into touch. A great run from Emoti Coloto. He sold one of his dummies and he went for the gap. Just didn't have the legs to make it to himself. Jonathan Davis was on the wing at the time, but he, again, he just ran out of space. David Hume's having a word with Mr. Allott about that incident off the ball. To no avail, it's a scrum. Wigan come up with possession. Steve Hampson brought down by Holiday. Dean Bell drives it in, doesn't make any space. I think Gregory's coming into the play now. He's shouting for the ball and he's going to put another kick in. That's a good kick from Gregory, sending Witness back into the own half. And John Devereaux, it seems content to let it go out, but in fact, it's not going to cross the dead ball line. Alan Tate's forced to pick it up. Gives it to Devereaux, but there's only the two Witness players there against the whole line. And Devereaux's lost the ball. Well, that's a disaster for Witness. Five Wigan players, good play from Wigan. And now Wigan are moving it out to the left. Sean Edwards takes it back. Devereaux took a knock in that incident there. I think Devereaux and Dean Bell must have clashed heads because both players are down on the floor. But Wigan now in possession and Andy Platt's going for the line. Held off by McKenzie. Witness now have got to defend desperately. The ball goes out to the right. Good way, well... Andy Gregory threw it back inside. John Devereaux goes off after that injury. And Darren Wright comes on. Devereaux seems to have taken a knock to his shoulder. And for Wigan, Bobby Golding comes on. And Dermot goes off. Golding's gone to scrum half. And now Martin the fire. He just gets away from Preston, but he, Preston slowed him down enough to let the cover. Preston's tackle on the ankles was just enough to let the cover in. at Kurt Sorensen, that's a storming run from Sorensen, he turned but there was nobody on his shoulder McKenzie, inside to Holiday. Holiday sidestep from the gap, well the witness player seems to watch that ball, witness having some problems now John yeah we're turning over too many ball Gary, um, we're going to look very strong at the moment, witness have to look for uh, Holiday and Tony Marlis the creative players in the team to try and strive to try out to this Wigan team yeah, it's very difficult to crack this Wigan defence and once they're on top, they certainly don't like conceding anything. And Andy Platt's burst through two tackles there. A great run from Andy Platt. He went through Sonnenson and Holiday. Witness have got to step up the tackling now. Again, they depend on their own line. And that's a good kick, kick from Gregory. And the crowd in the corner cheers. It's difficult to tell from here. But certainly Mr Allett is having none of it. Touch judge agrees with him. But a great chip again from Andy Gregory. And really, this little man is running the show, and anybody who's pretending to have ideas of taking over his Great Britain spot is going to have to prove a lot because Gregory has done a lot in this game. Hampson takes it on the full, gives it to Lydon. Lydon's content to run at Sorensen and Holiday. In fact, it's, uh, it's only good way. In possession, Dennis Betts comes in, and Betts has gone through Holiday. Well, that's another missed tackle from Les Holiday. And the witness defence now is nearly going to have to pull up this tackling because we're going to press again on the line. 
And again, it's Gregory. What's he going to do now? He slips it inside to Edwards. Platt again does a run around. This time it's with Sean Edwards. Wigan taking full advantage of Andy Platt's ball handling skills in this match. Jed Byrne now to Gregory. Gregory takes it out of the ball and loses it. Peloto, Jonathan Davis, that side steps there. And can he do it? He's got Hampson to beat. It's just going, Jonathan Davis. It's going for the corner. It's still going. And it's still going. Well, well, what, what Mr. Allen has given her, the touch just gave something. Jonathan Davis had the legs on them all, except Mark Preston caught up with him, but he sidestepped inside Preston. Well, he looks, surely he can't have stepped in touch. Well, it's scrummed down. It looks as if uh, Jonathan Davis just stepped in touch. Very unfortunate because he'd beaten the defence. And Witness come away from the scrum with the ball. A penalty for Witness. Offside at the scrum. But that was a great burst from Jonathan Davis. John, we've seen that Davis sidestep again. Yeah, superb. Um, typical Witness. Great out of defence. This is why it's such a good team. They can they can turn the tables in a second. It could be an 80 yard try. And unfortunately, with the foot in touch, missed out that time. And now Wigan caught offside. Well, a witness going to go for the two points and equal the scores. Dan Wright is certainly shouting to move it out to the right, but I think Captain Tony, Tony Myler steps up and says, hang on, calm it down a bit. The sand buckets come on. And witness are going to look to Jonathan Davis to even the scores. So Jonathan Davis with the responsibility of levelling the scores with 15 minutes to go in this match. And he does so, it's a simple one for Davis. So it's Wigan and Witness 16 points each, 15 minutes to go in this. And if this match were to end in a draw, the replay would be on Wednesday night at Central Park at 7.30. I'm sure both sides wanted to avoid that. Some confusion in the Wigan players as to where the kick was going. Lydon puts it deep. Oh, well, that was a good kick from Joe Lydon. It went right close to the post, and I want to say, clearly, was very unlucky there. Excellent kick from Joe Lydon. It's difficult for full backs to take the ball in that situation. So Davis forced to drop out from under the sticks. Again, it goes straight to Tate. And again, Goodway comes in on the run. Well, there's a gap in the witness line, but Goodway didn't spot it. But he managed still to get the ball out. And this time it's goal inside to open up the witness defence. Sean Edwards behind the play of the ball. Having to talk to Ian Gildart. He takes it himself. Tackled by Courier McKenzie. Kelvin Skerritt runs at Coloto. Coloto takes him down the ankles. This time it's Golding. Gildart. Gregory comes into it. Dummies to Platt. Edwards takes it standing still. Runs at McKenzie. A good tackle by Phil McKenzie. Gregory. This time it's to Platt. Platt coming more and more into the centre of the game for Wigan. Platt and, Ke and Gregory at the moment dictating the game for Wigan. 